Introduction to Musky Fishing by Mark Lalonde and Tara Albany for Totem Resorts. Welcome to Totem Resorts, Asics of Musky Fishing. This guide introduces musky fishing to beginners and will be understood better as you put the information into practice. There are three methods for catching muskies, casting, trolling, and jigging. Much of the discussion under casting applies to trolling and jigging. All three can be effective. Musky fishing involves a skill set you will enjoy developing and can provide heart racing thrills. Casting, safety. Be cautious with the large, sharp treble hooks on the lures. Cast directly overhead over the top of your shoulder, not sidearm. Make sure everything is clear behind you before you begin each cast. Also, take care as you reel in and bring your lure into the boat. You want to hook fish, not anyone else. There is a risk of hitting others with the lure and to a lesser extent hitting yourself, especially when tired and not as focused. The tackle. Generally, we will be using heavy nine-foot rods with large lures, 80 to 100 pound test line, and fluorocarbon or stainless steel leaders. One reason for the heavy tackle and extra strong line is to help keep up tension and not have the rod flex or the line stretch too much, which would dilute power from setting the hook. The reel, open at the top, feeds the line out from side to side. It's called a bait caster, as opposed to a smaller spinning reel used for walleye. On the bait casting reel, the guide will set the drag, tension, and brake for you. The reel locks automatically, preventing the line from unspooling each time you begin cranking. To release the lock and allow the line to be free to unspool, press the small bar on the reel. Keep your thumb pressed on the line in the open reel as you unlock it. Casting technique. Let the momentum of the smooth swing and the flex of the long rod do the work. Don't twist your torso like swinging a bat or golf club. Your elbow is the fulcrum. Proper technique lets you make safe and accurate casts while conserving energy. Most cast standing up, but many prefer sitting. Good balance is needed to fish for muskies standing in a boat, especially when the muskie strikes. Try both ways and decide what you like or alternate. If it is your very first time, you may want to practice casting off the dock. To begin, while keeping your thumb pressed on the line in the open spool, you first will unlock the reel. Then let the line slip out a bit to lower the lure just over a foot from the rod tip. For example, a few inches of line past a 12-inch leader. You may lower the lure more for longer casts, but best to start with a shorter length between the rod tip and lure for greater control. To cast, you will grip the rod with both hands. Assuming you are right-handed, your right hand will be holding the rod just below the reel with your thumb firmly on the line in the unlocked spool, and your left hand will be about a foot lower gripping near the bottom of the rod. Then load the rod by a backward motion over your shoulder, bringing the rod behind you nearly horizontally and in a continuous fluid motion, reverse direction, and swing the rod over your shoulder, extending your arms from the elbow. Release your thumb pressure when the rod is about 45 degrees above the water, then continue to point your rod tip at the arcing lure. While the lure is in flight, keep your thumb with a slight touch on the unspooling line in the reel, just enough to feel it unspool. A split second before the lure hits the water, depress your thumb back onto the reel tightly to stop the outspooling line. You also will depress your thumb earlier if you have cast too far. For example, heading too close to the shore or trees, weeds, rocks, and you want to shorten the cast. As the lure hits the water, immediately switch hands, your left thumb trading places with your right thumb to secure the line on the reel temporarily until it locks, and the fingers of your left hand gripping the rod below the reel. There is a trigger under the rod. Place your middle finger in front of the trigger, ideally between your palm and second knuckle, where you would wear a ring. Simultaneously, your right hand goes to the reel handle and begin cranking quickly to make sure the reel locks and the line has tension. Place your left thumb on top of the reel on the left side, grasping the side of the reel firmly, keeping your thumb off the line in the locked spool. Point your left index finger straight to reach under the rod below the reel. With two fingers in front of the trigger and two behind, you will have a firm grip to set the hook with power and keep the rod under control. 
Note, some anglers prefer to use their left hand to grasp the foregrip, the corked part of the rod directly in front of the reel, rather than using the trigger and holding the side of the reel. That alternative method makes it harder to keep the rod from twisting and is not as stable as using the trigger and grasping the left side of the reel with your thumb on the top left side. Immediately, as you switch hands and start cranking, you will position the end of the rod at your side below your left armpit so that you can clamp down on the rod with your upper left arm if a muskie strikes. If there is a knob on the end of the rod, place that knob either just behind or directly under your arm, whichever you find more comfortable. At all times, take care not to lose the rod overboard. Both hands on the rod and reel, and then the end under your arm, will keep the rod secure. Skilled anglers may vary from some of these fundamentals, but it is best to follow them as you gain experience. It is easy to lose focus while enjoying the scenery and each other's company and after a long period of time with no action. To be ready, you have to expect that each moment your lure is in the water will result in a strike. Note, a muskie can strike as soon as the lure hits the water and at any point until you take it out. Estimating roughly, 30% of the muskie strikes hit right after the lure enters the water and you start retrieving. 25% hit while reeling in as the lure approaches the boat, and 45% hit near the boat after following the lure. Avoiding backlash. Avoid causing a backlash or bird's nest, tangling the line in the reel. Backlash occurs when the spool rotates faster than the lure is pulling out line. There is a risk of fouling the line if the reel keeps feeding out after the lure reaches the water. As mentioned above, it is important that you are ready to clamp your thumb down on the spool just as the lure is about to hit the water. If you don't, backlash is virtually certain. Also, as mentioned above, even as you release your thumb pressure during the casting motion, keep your thumb feathering the spool as the line feeds out. Sometimes, for example if the lure is held up by a headwind, the line can feed out faster than the lure is moving away from the reel. Feathering your thumb over the outspooling line minimizes backlash during the cast and keeps your thumb positioned to be ready to clamp down. A backlash is not a crisis, but untangling the line delays fishing. The only way to catch fish is to have your hook in the water. If you experience a backlash, just ask the guide for help. Note, you also have to be ready for the lure not to fly at all and instead have it spike in the water right in front of the boat. Assuming you have released your thumb from the reel during the cast, this spiking can occur for two reasons. One is that the reel was not unlocked or the crank handle was touched during the casting motion enough to cause the reel to re-lock. The other is that the line can get twisted around the tip of the rod. Check before casting. Spikes are rare but do happen. A secure grip on the rod with both hands at all times will keep it in your grasp even if the lure spikes reeling in the lure before a strike. The reeling techniques are easy to pick up and depend on the type of lure, whether it stays on the surface or dives to various depths or you want to put action on the lure as you retrieve it. In most instances, you will reel in relatively quickly. Muskies are fast swimmers. Keep the tip pointing in the direction of the lure and not to the side. For example, if the wind blows your lure sideways or if you are turned while talking with someone in the boat. Gradually lower your rod tip as the lure gets closer to the boat. Rod placement while retrieving is important to be ready to set the hook. Before lifting the lure out of the water, do some figure eights at the side of the boat. Musky often follow lures before striking and then can hit when it looks like the prey is trying to get away. Sometimes you can see the musky following the lure and sometimes not. When you have a little line left to reel in, for example anywhere from as little as 3 to 6 inches above the leader to as much as having the lure about 3 feet from the rod tip, continue moving the lure at about the same speed as your retrieve and varying your depth from near the surface to 2 to 3 feet below it by dipping your rod tip into the water and doing a very rounded figure 8 motion with wide turns. Hold on to the rod with both hands, typically with your left hand remaining gripped below the reel and your right going from the reel handle to the end of the rod, gripping the knob if there is one. Bending forward and reaching out with the rod helps keep the figure eight rounded and the turns wide. Don't cut back and forth at sharp angles. Muskies are fast but can't turn on a dime. 
Changing speed and depth somewhat during the figure eight may entice a strike. It will be exciting if you see a muskie following the lure at any distance. Don't try to set the hook prematurely, not before the fish takes the lure and you feel weight on the line. Also, it's easy to freeze if you see a muskie following your lure. Don't change speeds too much, especially don't slow the lure down for long. That muskie may lose interest if the lure slows or stops, unlike how a natural prey would act. At the boat, continue with a rounded figure eight motion, grip the rod tight, and be ready for a strike. Setting the hook upon a strike and reeling in the fish. Hook setting comes with practice. How best to set the hook varies depending on how hard the muskie hits, the type of lure, the distance from the boat, and the depth in the water. Ordinarily set the hook once and then reel to keep tension on the line. First, be aware that while some strikes are hard and unmistakable, others are difficult to perceive. If you sense anything unusual, set the hook. There is little downside to setting the hook if it felt like your lure may have bumped into something in the water, for example, weeds. But even if there's only a slight bump or tick or some slack in the line, just barely noticeable, it could be a muskie that has taken the lure into its mouth and is swimming toward the boat. Sometimes what you think may have been a weed or a rock was actually a muskie. Again, if you ever have any doubt, immediately set the hook. All the hook set attempts that turn out to be false alarms are more than justified by those occasions when it works. When setting the hook, be firm and forceful. Muskies have strong jaws and the insides of their mouths are tough. You want to give yourself a good chance of having the muskie get hooked and stay hooked. Usually the hooks are underneath and or behind the lure, not on top. Better hook sets are into the muskie's jaw, not straight up toward the roof of its mouth. Anticipate in which direction you will be setting the hook. Most right-handed anglers prefer to set the hook toward their right side. Sometimes that is not possible with others in the boat. Envision what you will do for each cast and decide what is the optimal way to set the hook, changing tactics as you reel in and the lure gets closer to the boat. As mentioned above, how you set the hook depends on where the muskie strikes. For starters, let's assume you feel weight on the line far from the boat below the water surface. Preparing for a strike with every cast, your rod will be pointed toward the lure. Snap your arms firmly, moving the rod diagonally sideways and upward and turning your torso toward the side. Now is the time to put your body into it. As you turn your torso, you also may want to lean a bit backward, whether standing or pushing into the back of your seat. As you are retrieving your lure, your hook set will be increasingly more to the side and less upward. If your lure is nearing the boat, a better hook set will sweep toward the side. Generally, a sideways hook set also should be used with a topwater lure. The reason is that you do not want the muskie to leap into the air. As impressive a spectacle that is, a muskie thrashing with its head out of the water risks loss of tension in the line and the muskie throwing the hook. If a muskie strikes when the lure is at the side of the boat, for example, during a figure eight, your hook set will be all sideways and even a bit downward if the muskie is on the surface so that you don't raise its head. If your rod tip was in the water, set the hook keeping the tip in the water. Note, if the muskie hits at the boat, sometimes it can be netted quickly and sometimes it will take line out for a longer fight. If the muskie does not take line out, you will keep tension on the line by pulling the muskie with your rod tip under the water, ultimately toward the net when the muskie has tired enough to let you. Also, no matter what you do, a lot depends on whether the muskie hooks itself hard or barely in the side of the lip or somewhere in between. Some strikes miss too much of the lure for the fish to get and stay hooked. Other times, they hammer the lure and are hooked solid. You may not know which until the muskie is in the net or if it was able to shake the hook even with a taut line. If you do everything right, you can still miss, but your odds for success are better. When reeling in a hooked fish, the key point is to keep tension on the line. A slack line allows the muskie to throw the hook. Reel in as quickly as necessary to keep a bend in the rod without raising the muskie's head above the water. As the muskie nears the boat, get ready to stop reeling and start pulling the muskie sideways with your rod to keep up tension. Although there are 
exceptions. As a beginner, when reeling with a muskie on the hook, ordinarily you should keep the rod raised at about a 45 degree angle, especially when the fish is still far from the boat and not at the surface. Experienced anglers know how to keep tension on the line with a lowered rod tip, but beginners usually are better served keeping the rod up until the muskie gets closer to the boat and until there is a potential for lifting its head out of the water. The closer to the boat the muskie gets, the more you will keep tension sideways rather than with the rod raised. Never point your rod directly at the fish. A lowered rod tip pointing at the muskie takes the pressure off the rod and puts it all on the line and risks allowing slack. As discussed above, how muskies strike varies. If a monster attacks the lure and swims away from the boat, the rod will bend over and you will be hanging on for dear life. When a hooked muskie heads away or deep, it will take line out against the drag. It doesn't do any good to crank the reel while the line is being pulled out, and generally you shouldn't, but it doesn't cause much harm and the line will still go out. It is important to be ready to keep the tension on the line. If you're not sure, keep reeling. It's worth repeating that with some strikes you almost can't tell they have happened. If the muskie takes the lure while swimming up or toward the boat, there could be no change in tension or even a slight loosening of the tension. If you have any sense that something seems different, reel in fast and you might catch up to a fish that has the lure in its mouth. Then set the hook and keep reeling to maintain tension on the line. As you reel in with a muskie on the hook, if the muskie is extra heavy and not too close to the boat, you may need to pull the rod up and then reel quickly as you lower it, always keeping a bend in the rod. With a heavy muskie closer to the boat, follow the same procedure but pull the rod to the side and then reel as you bring the bent rod back toward but not pointing at the fish. The goal is to put the line back on the reel without allowing any slack. If you think the muskie you have been fighting got off the hook, it may have, but also it could be charging toward the boat. There is no downside to reeling in quickly to make sure why the line went slack. The one that got away maybe didn't. With a muskie on the line, listen to the guide if he gives you instructions. Note, if anyone in the boat gets a muskie strike, usually everyone will know it or someone will yell fish. The other anglers must reel in fast to get their lures out of the water. A muskie can be lost if it manages to swim around someone else's line. Then, with their lures retrieved and back in the boat, those not fishing are in a good position to record the action. Be prepared. Think ahead of what you will do if the muskie strikes at any time. The fight to net the muskie may not take long, just a minute or so, but will be packed with excitement. Netting the fish. When you get the muskie to the side of the boat, the guide will try to net it for you. You need to help the guide by doing the following. 1. Keep tension on the line even if you are not reeling in. You shouldn't reel in the leader. By pulling the rod in the opposite direction of where the muskie wants to swim and continuing to do so even as the fish tries to change course. Try to stand your ground, but you may need to move around a bit in the boat. Don't feel stuck in one spot. Sometimes, if the muskie swims under the boat, you may have to move your rod tip around one end of the boat to the other side. First and foremost, avoid slack at all times. 2. As best you can, keep the muskie near the surface without raising its head out of the water. A raised head results in violent shaking that can throw the hook. 3. Be aware of where the fish and the net are, with your goal to pull the muskie head first into the net the guide has placed in the water. 4. As soon as the muskie is securely in the net, unlock the reel to give some slack so that the guide can extract the hook. Handling the muskie in the boat. Our practice is to catch and release all muskie, although Ontario regulations currently allow keeping a Lake of the Woods muskie that is 54 inches or over. We want to preserve the health of the fish, so the time in the boat will be short, just enough for quick photos, video, and measurement if the muskie was not measured in the net. The guide will lift the muskie into the boat and help you hold it. Be sure to hold it and all fish that you are releasing horizontally, not vertically or diagonally. If a muskie is in distress, its fins will turn reddish. Rely on the guide for best practices. Hanging the fish vertically to weigh it is bad for its health, so recording weight has given way to measuring length. Trolling. To troll for muskie, the boat will be moving faster than you might expect, given how fast they swim. 
you will hold the rod and feed out the line under your thumb on the reel to a distance directed by the guide, for example, 60 feet. Then crank the handle a turn to lock the reel and anticipate a strike. You may be surprised how much tension there is on the line during trolling, often more than you would feel reeling in a big walleye. The tension will decrease or increase as the boat turns left and right. If a gradual change in tension occurs at the point of a turn, it's probably not a strike. But as always, upon first having any doubt, immediately set the hook and start reeling. There is only a possible advantage and little disadvantage. You always can feed the line back out if there is no hooked fish. By trolling, our guides can help place your lure where a muskie may strike, covering more water than hundreds of casts. Trolling can provide an attractive alternative to casting and under some conditions may be preferable. Stay vigilant and be ready for a muskie to take the bait. Jigging. Last but not least is jigging for muskie, which has gained in popularity over the past decade. There are musky lures designed for jigging, most notably the bondi bait. Jigging has proven to be effective and even has become a preferred method to catch musky that are deeper. When the guide has the boat in position and says you can drop the lure, lower your rod tip to just above the water, unlock the reel, and let the line feed out straight down, keeping your thumb feathered on the spool. When the lure hits the bottom, when the line goes slack, wind up the number of cranks as directed by the guide. Sometimes you will jig in a specific range, for example, always starting near the bottom. Other times you may start higher or jig through various depths. It is not impossible for a muskie to strike on the initial drop of the lure, so when you get slack, wind up quickly a crank or two to lock the reel and put tension on the line to make sure you found the bottom and not a fish. Grip the rod as discussed above, keeping your thumb away from the line on the locked reel. You will be cranking that reel fast when you get a strike. Start jigging after you have found the bottom and reeled the lure up as directed. You will begin with a lowered rod tip. Raise the rod tip somewhat quickly, easy to time it with practice, as if your lure is prey trying to escape a muskie. Avoid losing tension and creating slack in the rising line by slowing the upward motion of your rod before the tip reaches the highest point. In this way, momentum will not keep the lure rising after the rod tip has stopped. Then, lower the rod tip all the way down somewhat slowly, as if the bait is dying and sinking back to the bottom. A muskie will hit a jigging lure both on the way up and on the way down. Jigging creates the alternating impression of an escaping prey and then a dying one. Both bait actions will induce a strike. If a muskie strikes the lure on the way down, it's more likely to be an unmistakable rod bender. Set the hook by pulling the rod diagonally, sideways and upward, for example, at a 45 degree angle, turning your torso toward the side and start reeling to maintain a bend in the rod. If a muskie strikes the lure on the way up, all you might feel is a little bump or tug, or the line will lose tension when it shouldn't because the muskie is swimming upward with the lure in its mouth. If you sense anything like that, reel as fast as you can to catch up to the fish, then snap a hook set. This situation, where it's not certain you have a muskie on the line, also can occur when the lure is on the way down if the muskie is coming up. Again, in all situations, when in doubt, set the hook. Good jigging locations often are where the bottom changes depth. After jigging for a bit, as the boat drifts, your lure may hit bottom again if the water becomes shallower. If so, once again crank up to the starting depth. Also, the guide will tell you if the boat is drifting into deeper water so that you can lower the lure to find the bottom. If you snag the bottom, of course you'll know it because the line will be taut but the lure is stationary. If you can't get free in a couple tugs, tell the guide. If the boat is drifting, you may have to unlock the reel. Whenever you do, keep your thumb lightly on the spool. Muskie see upward, not beneath them, based on where their eyes are positioned. Walleye have evolved to lie with their stomachs on the bottom, so that the muskie can't see them easily. For this reason, jigging for walleye and jigging for muskie at the bottom of the lake often can be done at the same spot. Where there are abundant walleye, there might be muskie. As with all musky fishing, expect to strike at all times when your lure is in the water, even if nothing has happened for a long time. Envision what you will do when the strike happens, because that instant of going from peace to panic leaves little time to think. Conclusion 
There is something about having a positive attitude and expecting a muskie to strike in the next moment, no matter how long you have been trying before you find success, that will keep you alert and give you the best chance to catch a nice muskie. So many are drawn to muskie fishing for good reason. Muskie are the most aggressive, large, predatory freshwater fish in North America. As the apex predator, muskies can eat whatever and whenever they want, and they have a lake full of feeding opportunities. Opportunities. Muskies do not necessarily hit the lures they follow, yet they often strike with a vengeance. They are strong and adept at throwing the hook. No doubt, fighting and catching the elusive muskie is an achievement. Lake of the Woods, Ontario is prime muskie habitat. You've come to the right place. As you gain experience, you will come to understand nuances and exceptions to the basic information in this beginner's guide. Beyond increasing your knowledge about how to handle the tackle and learning fishing strategies, patience and perseverance are your keys to success. The guides at Totem Resorts have expertise second to none. It is not unusual for a totem guide to net well over 150 muskie in one year. Regardless of your experience level, our guides know how to put you on muskie and can help you catch a prize you will always remember. Read by Rajia Drosti at Laguna Sound, Laguna Beach, California, May 25, 2023.